Greetings, radio people. It is the 21st of March, 2020. The UK is on pretty much lockdown. Uh, the coronavirus is sweeping the world and there's some pretty hideous pictures on our televisions at the moment. So I'm trying to bury my head in the sand and pretend that it's not happening. And I've been thinking a bit more, some final musings, and I promise this is the last on this topic, of the uh, power meter that we made. Now, if you look at the schematic on screen, well, the first thing to show you, I suppose, is this. This is an article from QEX by the AIRL back in May, June 2005. I actually made one of these. This is a PIC based HF power meter. I've got one of these made. It's on the bench here. It's got an LCD uh, liquid crystal display and it's quite an accurate DBM power meter. And when I started off as a, a young uh, RFE type person trying to fiddle with this kind of stuff. It was one of the most useful tools I ever had. And if you were to find this article, so it's called a PIC based HF VHF power meter, it's available on the internet, you can find it and download it. There's also some references and some various other articles that you'll soon find which show you how to make some fairly cheap and inexpensive bits and bobs to calibrate this very accurately. So whilst I've got all this fancy test gear here and I can calibrate fairly simple circuits quite easily, there are ways to do this without any of that stuff. And this will allow you to make a really, really useful tool for the bench if you're interested in fiddling around with RF circuits and all of that kind of gubbins. So looking at the design that they used here, it used the same chip in the front end, the 88307, the logarithmic amplifier that we've used in our power meter. But it had a slightly modified front end which I've copied here so there's 52.3 ohms I've used down to ground and I've actually bought some leaded resistors from Farnell of that value so they do exist and you can get them but if you haven't got any just use 47 ohms it'll be close enough. This is 470 there's 15 picofarads in parallel this inductor here is actually one turn of this capacitor's lead around a 5 mil drill bit I actually used my father's posi drive screwdriver that I inherited from him many years ago when he died. Um, but that has given us a better front end which seems to give much flatter response across a much wider frequency range. So that's a definite improvement to the circuit. But let me show you what's downstream of that. I've used something called an LMC6482. Now I've used that because I happen to have some. But what this needs to be is a rail to rail op amp. Now, this basically is designed to take the output of the 88307 and make it swing as far as possible between the power rails of the microprocessor. And what that will do is maximize the, the uh, granularity, if you like, of the analog to digital converter. So you don't want the voltage moving around half a volt or a volt for the full range of this, this amplifier output. You want it to swing as much as possible. And the microprocessor's got a much better chance of getting an accurate reading on that because it'll use the full resolution of the ADC. Now you need to remember that the STM32 that we're using has a 12-bit analog to digital converter. So the integer values that it reads in range from 0 at 0 volts to 4095 or 4096, can't remember, at 3.3 volts. So we need to maximize that swing as much as possible. So these values here, this 1.5k and this 6.8k here, are designed to make the output range of the 88307 swing as much as possible. Now, I started off with both of those components running at 3.3 volts because our STM32 is a 3.3 volt device. We don't want to deliver any more than that voltage to the analog inputs. So at 3.3 volts, this is the range that I found by feeding in different uh, DBM values into my 88307 that I've just shown you, the circuit that I've just shown you. And we've only basically got a usable range here, which ranges from about minus 15 DBM down to about minus 55 dBm. Now clearly you could move that up power wise by adding an attenuator at the input or what have you. But that is quite a low range. The shape is exactly the same as the 88307 datasheet, but the range is quite compressed and it's compressed because we're running the device on 3.3 volts. So I then tried running both of them at 5 volts and this is the result I got. My signal generator wouldn't go high enough for me to find the flat top but clearly a much wider range. So this got me thinking, and what I actually decided to do was run the 88307 
on a 5 volt supply to get the maximum output swing but then run the op amp that's the rail to rail op amp at 3.3 volts so that means that we can't deliver more than 3.3 volts to the microcontroller but the 88307 is operating at its maximum swing so exactly the same way that I did last time I plotted the usable range of this uh, of this configuration here asked Excel to show me the equation of the trend line and then got the alpha beta values and of exactly the same equations that we used last time so what we can do now is take any ADC value from our circuit input so depending on whatever the RF is and convert that to DBM very accurately so the schematic that I'll link in now is exactly as I've just described and I've got some of these uh, MCP 1700 3.3 volt they're low dropout voltage regulators they're only about 30p from Farnell or something like that but you could use anything that you've got you could even use an LM317 to drop the 5 down to 3.3 so this is a 5 volt feed here which is running the 88307 and I've got the op amp running at 3.3 volts so what I've also tried to do is improve the graphics on the screen and give the power meter two different modes so we're either running in a forward reflected calculate SWR power meter connecting to your antenna type of range or we're running in a mode where we've got a different front end with lower amplitude uh, sensitivity and that will run in a, just a DBM meter mode so let me show you what it looks like now and I promise no more on this topic just before I show you the power meter running on the bench I wanted to show you a quick close-up of this new logarithmic amplifier op-amp combination that I've built. Um, so this is how I've got it configured on a piece of board at the moment. So this is the 52.3M resistor, 470, 15 picofarads. That's the one turn of the leg that I talked about, that inductor that's in the schematic. Uh, the rest of this is pretty similar to how we had it before. And then this is the rail-to-rail op-amp. So the output is coming out of here. So this is going off to the analog to digital input of the microcontroller. And this is my 5 volt feed. And this is the 3.3 volt regulator. Now to the bench. So here's the current lash up on the bench. The power meter is in its power up default mode, which is where we've got two displays. The display on the left is the forward power in DBM. The display on the right is the reflected power in DBM. And the number you can see down here is the calculated SWR. The meters color code and change and swing around and do all of the things you'd expect them to do. I haven't got any power connected to this at the moment. These are just floating. So um, I'm concentrating on the new mode that I've added to it. So if you touch the screen, it'll change mode for you. And what that now does is measure the RF in through this new front end that I just showed you and display a single value on the screen. So I'm currently injecting 35 dBm, minus 35 dBm at 14 megahertz. And you'll see that it's measuring that very very accurately the beauty about this new configuration is if I were to change that to 432 megahertz which I've just done the amp the, the meter is equally as accurate at these high frequencies it seems to work up to at least 500 megahertz if not probably a little bit beyond um, so this is working really really well if I were to change this to be let's say amplitude um, uh, 0 dBm for example I'm at 432 megahertz, so I'm only 1 dB out. If I change the frequency back to 15 megahertz, for example, 0.0, .0 dBm. Let's change the amplitude to minus uh, 5 dBm, for example. I'm sorry, I've typed it in wrong. Minus 5 dBm minus 5.5 it's pretty accurate i mean half a db here or there is not much to worry about really um, so if we were to look at the amplitude and just turn the dial and see where it's at so that's reading about minus 4.9 dBm and it's reading minus 5. There's going to be some losses in the cables, of course, that I've got connected. So I'm pretty confident that this is pretty accurate now. So if we get a minus 25 dBm, it's pretty good. And I really like the display. And the most uh, the highest amplitude you can go up to is plus 10 dBm. So it's really smart. This is well worthy of a box and a, a place on the shack shelf i hope you're doing well if you like what i'm doing please 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 let's have a thumbs up subscribe to the channel i would very much enjoy your company see you next time